Okay, so as you know, I recently got the Canon EOS M, which is Canon's first attempt at a mirrorless camera, when it originally released in 2012. Now you may think that this camera is just a regular point-and-shoot camera, just like this one, but there exists a third-party software called Magic Lantern, which is based on the older Canon PowerShot hack known as CHDK, which adds so many features to the camera. Focus peaking, histograms, even the ability to turn up the bitrate on H.264 videos. But Magic Lantern also adds a feature that allows you to record high resolution 5.2K videos. So now I'm going to show you how to install Magic Lantern. So many people who just want to try out Magic Lantern without doing any extra research just sometimes go to the Magic Lantern website and download the nightly build. But those versions usually have no special features. They're usually a handful of years old. They're usually not the greatest builds. Luckily, there were many versions that have been made since then that have improved on the Magic Lantern build, like adding SD overclocking, 14, 12, 11, and 10 bit raw video recording, and there's literally still releasing new versions to this day, like I found a build from February, and a very very notable Magic Lantern build is called Crop Mood, which originally was released on April 2023, made for some Digic 5 cameras like this EOS M, or the 650D, 700D, or the 100D, and Crop Mood is the best Magic Lantern build that I recommend at this moment in time, and it has the most features. And if you work out its quirks, then you can get really good looking 14-bit video clips from this camera, and Crop Mood has practically all the features I mentioned above. And there are options in the settings that allow you to overclock your SD card all the way up to 240 megahertz, which is only supported by a handful of SD cards, which enables the camera to record raw videos at a higher resolution and bitrate than normal. So when I tested my Pixter 64GB SD card, it only overclocked up to 160 megahertz, and 192 megahertz did not actually work, so the write speeds are very limited. 54 megabytes per second. So I did a little bit of research and looked up which SD card works at up to 200 140 megahertz, and I went ahead and I got the 128 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme 180 read speed, 90 write speed SD card, and I tested 240 megahertz on it, and this is what happened. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. Those are some pretty good write speeds from this. And I was able to get the full 90 megabytes per second write speed, which is equivalent to an insane 720 megabits per second. Now, obviously, the SD card is not going to operate this fast while recording continuous raw video. The card's going to heat up and the speed's going to drop to around 75, but that's still pretty good. And I am able to get up to the highest resolution that each mode in crop mode supports while recording in 10 or 12 bit. In this case, the 3K resolution in the 1x1 mode, 5.2K in the 3x1 mode, and and practically all the slow motion modes at higher bit depths. But the SD card that I got is actually not the very top end best card that you can get for this camera, because I've seen people go as high as 95 megabytes per second, which is awfully close to gigabit speeds. But obviously, people who get those speeds would be spending a lot on the highest end UHS-1 SD cards. Now, I just want to go over a few things. So speaking of high resolutions, the Canon EOS M actually doesn't record in 5K resolution. It's recording in a bin resolution, which means that it may be saving it at a super high resolution on your computer when you export it from the MLV app, but the camera is actually recording at one third the horizontal resolution. Here in the settings, you can see that at the very highest resolution option, it saves the video at 1736 by 2214. The highest native RAW resolution at 24 FPS that you can film on this camera is a little over 3K. You can film RAW on the entire sensor, but given the speed of the sensor on the EOS M, the limit is only 3 frames per second. There is also a high frame rate mode that allows you to record with 3x3 three three pixel binning, which basically means for every 9 pixels, that equals 1 pixel in the RAW video. And that actually enables you to record in higher frame rates, all the way up to 60 frames per second raw which is pretty good. There's also a normal low frame rate option where you can film some still pretty decent looking raw and this mode is actually the best mode to use if you don't want too much of that rolling shutter slit scan effect which I will get into in the next part of this video. The Canon EOS M has a very noticeable rolling shutter effect, which causes items in the image to skew a bit with fast motion. And this effect is more noticeable with higher resolutions, but you can usually get away with filming with lower resolutions because you get way better rolling shutter. Now, something I found which is very, very cool is that the community, specifically the people at IMCE, have made a Canon EOS M rehousing. And the rehousing is called the M Lite, which improves the ergonomics of the camera, increases the modular aspect of it, and just makes it look super perfect. 
professional. But the US Emery housing does cost quite a bit though, and they only sold the M Lite for a limited time up until September 2023. But apparently they'll be making more of them, so be on the lookout for that if you're interested. This video has been sponsored by me. If you want your videos edited in the high quality fashion that I normally edit my videos in, please check out my Fiverr, where you can send me your video clips and I can edit them for you if you want me to edit your YouTube video. There are three different tiers of which you want your quality of your video to be. Basically, the lowest one is the least editing, and then the highest one's the most editing, albeit most expensive. Pick your poison, I guess, but uh, yeah, please check out my Fiverr in the link below.